Almost everything we think about when we think of Christmas can be visualized in the nativity scene. These static figurines, ranging from tiny to life-size or larger, have come to embody the Christmas holiday for us. We tend to think of that first Christmas night as serene and calm as the newborn baby sleeps silently in that snug manger, surrounded quietly by adoring shepherds and wise men. Everything is as still and as peaceful as the porcelain figures that sit on our mantles or adorn our lawns. These tableaus help us tell an important part of the Christmas story by helping us to imagine an actual human baby and the actual human people who were drawn to witness his birth. But they don't tell the whole story. In the midst of our messy and constantly moving world, the peaceful vignette of a nativity scene seems so distant sometimes as to almost be a fairy tale, a representation of an event that never happened or could never happen in the chaos of the world that we know. And that's why John's story is so important for us to share at Christmas, even if it does seem a little bit out of place. It's hard for us to make sense of Christmas without the baby Jesus, without the manger. With no baby, there are no herald angels singing, no shepherds in the field abiding, no silent night or midnight clear, no little town of Bethlehem, no three wise men coming from country far by the light of yonder star. And yet this is the holiday that St. John gives us, devoid of all these things, all these familiar trappings. The picture John paints for us is not of a world at peace and stillness while a child is born, but a world shrouded in shadow, in chaos, in evil, in death, and of the divine light of life entering into that darkness. In the spirit of holiday cheer and the festivity of the season, I think John's image of Christmas is much more like the world as we know it. Not far beneath the thin veneer of holiday joy, there lies the same trouble that overshadows our world every other day of the year. Wars continue to rage. Conflicts continue to boil. People continue to flee and suffer and die while the stationary serenity of the nativity scene gives us hope for the peace that will be one day, it does not say much about the sin and darkness that swirl around us now. Instead of a world that seems to pause to recognize the birth of a savior, John tells us of a world stumbling blindly forward, oblivious to the savior already present, a world which owes him its entire existence, but which does not even recognize him. A world that continues spinning on through the endless night, where people continue machinating and scheming, oppressing and exploiting one another, fighting and killing and dying in the darkness, heedless of the light shining among them and within them. This sounds like the world we know. A world bathed in darkness, living in fear, fear of war, fear of climate change, fear of pandemic, fear of government overreach, fill, fear of the loss of the familiar. As strangers encounter one another in this darkness, we fear each other. We huddle together in our little tribes, seeking safety within our bubbles and painting horrible pictures of the enemies that surround us, who wish to destroy us and our way of life. We sharpen our spears and steel our nerves to fight not only on battlefields, but in legislatures and public forums and internet comment sections. We've become so afraid of one another in the dark that every moving shadow prepares us to kill or be killed. On Christmas, we celebrate that into the midst of this dark world, the true light has come. While we throw up our walls and our barriers and our checkpoints to separate ourselves from our enemies and to keep ourselves safe, to keep us separate from the people we have come to believe are too stupid or too malicious or simply too foreign to ever let into our safe space, we remember that in this time, God has torn through our barriers 
through the very veil between heaven and earth itself to become human, to become one of us. While we are busy separating ourselves from one another with politics and ideologies and labels, God becomes one with us in flesh and blood and spirit and truth. We try to save ourselves by isolating ourselves from those who are different from us. We close borders and gentrify neighborhoods. We draw boundaries on race and class and political opinion. It is this separation that creates the fear and the hatred that cloud and obscure our vision. But God chooses to step in and save us by shedding light on our story, by slipping into our skin to experience our hopes and our joys, our fears and our sorrows alongside us. The word made flesh teaches us to step out in faith across those borders, to walk across the no man's land and to enter into the experiences of the other, to come to see and to know the light of another, to see and to know one another in the light of God, to even come to love each other. Instead of a motionless nativity scene, Christmas is embodied in the movement of people toward one another, mirroring the movement of Christ toward us. This is what John means when he says that Jesus gives us the power to become children of God. Jesus transforms us to be like our Father, to become incarnate, fully present to one another. And in doing so, to be able to see the light of life that shines within all people, the true light of the word of God through whom all things came into being. Through the incarnation of Jesus at Christmas, God has given us each the power to become fully incarnate to one another. We often think of Christmas as being primarily about the story of a child, the baby Jesus lying in a manger, but it is as much about the story of all the children of God learning to see one another in the light of the world. The nativity scene reminds us that when Jesus became human, he was born not among the rich or the well-educated or the powerful, but among the poor. Because he lived among us as the poorest of us, he knew their struggles. He learned to love them for who they are when privileged and the elite did not. As children of God, we also have been given the power to live and to work, to struggle and to love among those whom the world has, has taught us to disdain, to learn to love as Jesus does. We have been given this ability not because of where we are or to whom we are born, not because of the will of the flesh or the will of a man, but because we have been reborn as people of the Spirit. At Christmas, we celebrate the light of the world which came into our darkness and still shines there. We celebrate that because the darkness has not overcome him, it cannot and it will not overcome us. The light of the world shines within us, and we have the power to shine that light into all the dark corners and the forgotten crevices of the world where people still huddle in fear of one another. For we have been enlightened with the light of life. Christmas is a celebration of God becoming one with us, giving us the power to become one with one another. We celebrate the incarnation of Christ because whenever we become incarnate to each other, whenever we cross those borders that divide us and reach out to love and bring joy in the midst of fear, we are children of God. Christmas never was a single moment to be captured in the nativity dioramas that we see everywhere this time of year. Christmas always has been and always will be a recognition and a celebration of the living, moving God who continues to break into our existence, to shine light into our darkness. 
Christmas is a moment of clarity, a time to pause and look around and recognize Christ where he has always been. In the birth of a baby in Bethlehem, yes, but also in the bread and wine at the table, broken for us. In the faces of our friends and neighbors and even our enemies around us, sanctified and sent out to be messengers of God's good news. To see him in the poor and the hungry and the outcast among us, inviting us into relationship with them even in those people that we have been taught to hate and to fear. Today, we celebrate that Christmas has come into the world. Excuse me. We celebrate that Christ has come in the wor- into the world to bring us release from fear, to be one of us and to teach us to be one with each other. He is the light of truth and love, shining in the darkness And today we bear witness that the darkness does not and cannot overcome it.